Hey everybody, it's Phil Coppola here, Regional Sales Manager in the great state of New Jersey for Genetech. One of those features that's so useful, but probably the most overlooked, is the ability to mine really useful data out of reports. And reports are probably something that's also just kind of looked over. I can't tell you how many times I've spoken to an end user or systems integrator and asked them about their experience with reports to get sort of like a glazed over look like, you know, we probably should run more reports. So in this video, uh, my goal is to take you through the reporting structure. Once you understand how to run one or two reports, you'll, you'll kind of get it for, for the balance of them. And then once we run that report, what sort of extra metadata can we extract? So it's, it goes far beyond just, hey, give me a time and date search and show me what video happened on this camera or uh, the access control logs on this particular door or set of doors. There's so much more data that you could be pulling out to make your security center implementation way more operationally uh, efficient. So let me show you what that looks like. Uh, we're gonna go through a couple of tips and tricks, and then if you stay tuned at the end, I'm gonna show you how to add some of these reports to your own custom dashboard. So let's jump into the software and take a look. Okay, here we are back in the Security Desk application. Like I said before, reports are like the lifeblood of any security operation. It's, it's one thing to know what's going on live in your facility, it's another thing to do like a time and date search and see recorded video, but it's a whole other thing to be able to pull uh, analytical data out of your system. So let me show you how we would do that with a few reports. And the first one that I want to choose is the bookmarks report. So in a previous uh, session, we talked about bookmarks and the ability to drop a bookmark is sort of like a digital breadcrumb. Uh, on a on a segment of the timeline so that you can easily find what it is that you're looking for. And the system can either um, automatically drop those bookmarks or those breadcrumbs along the, along the timeline, or it can um, be done manually, right? So if I'm watching a video, I could click on add a bookmark and it'll add a, a bookmark to, to that point in time. So now beyond just doing a search for uh bookmarks along a single timeline, what if I could run a report that shows every time a bookmark was dropped on my system? So here we are in the bookmarks task, or the bookmarks report, excuse me. What I'm gonna do is I wanna see every time a bookmark got dropped in this specific area. So it's asking you which area are you interested in looking at bookmarks for? I could specify a specific message that I was looking for. I'm going to leave that blank for now. I'm going to say, show this to me over the last seven days. Now, because there's a lot of bookmarks being generated by this particular system, uh, the number of, of queries exceeded the maximum configured. That's fine. It just means I'm getting like way more than 500 uh, responses back on this particular request. So I could either shorten this down or put in a specific message to sort of narrow narrow my search. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, if we look at this one, it shows me the camera, the source, so what area that came from, the event timestamp, when that motion was detected, or when that time, when that bookmark was dropped in the timeline, and also what the message was, as well as a thumbnail of what uh, triggered that specific event. Now, if I wanted to, uh, let me find a good video here. If I wanted to, I can double click on this and it'll bring me to that exact point in the timeline right here for me to review. And what you'll see here when it loads up is you'll see the, the timeline with the bookmark. So we're starting the video out, I think it's like 10 seconds prior to the actual incident. And then as the cursor approaches the bookmark, you'll see that the motion, the, that's when the motion was actually detected. And there you go. So really useful, right? I and mean, you, you can kind of see like what additional operational capabilities you could pick up just with this one simple type of report. But there's something really unique that's part of Genetech's reporting mechanism that not a lot of people are aware of because this feature came out in 5.0. Seven, and it's something called visual reports 
the ability to take this information and mine it for really useful metadata. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that right here with just this one report. I'm not even gonna leave this screen. Come over here and instead of looking at tiles, look at charts. And now we see a chart here. I'm gonna I'm gonna hide this because we don't really care about the video at this point. We're, we're actually looking for the data. So if you look at this particular line chart, this doesn't make a whole ton of sense. So I'm gonna uh, go to like a donut chart. And now what we can see is it's giving us what cameras had bookmarks occur uh, over the last seven days. So we could see that there were 518 total bookmarks dropped on the system and 125 of them came from this camera. So that's useful. Uh, but what if we sorted it by message? Now we can see that of the 518, 283 or 54.63% of them were motion being detected. Well, I don't really care about that. So I'm gonna deactivate that and have the report reconfigure itself on the fly. Now you can kind of see where this could start to get interesting because if you have this tied to an access control system and bookmarks are being dropped every time a door gets forced open or every time an access denied event occurs or every time an access granted event occurs or if you have this uh, drop a bookmark every time a license plate gets read. Now you can kind of get some really useful information about not who's using your system, but how your system is being used, right? Okay, so here we are in the cardholder activities report. Now, again, the reporting structure is very similar from report to report to report. So just like in the bookmarks report, so if I jump back there, it's asking me first, give me the area, then give me a little bit more. So give me the message and then give me the time range that you're looking for. So over seven days in this cardholder activities report, it's asking me which cardholder groups or which specific cardholders are you looking for? Which credentials would you would you be looking for? So for example, if uh, you have somebody that's got a physical card and maybe a key fob and maybe a license plate number, well, maybe I'm looking only for events with that specific license plate. Uh, which doors specifically? So I'm looking for somebody in the student's uh, cardholder group using this credential checking into this specific door so I could get that granular if I wanted to over what time range. So I'm this report's uh, going to be giving me the last 30 days. And I can even specify what specific types of access control incidents or even some custom events um, that uh, that I'm looking for. So I could say, show me only access denied. And when I generate this report, this is literally only going to show me people who had their access denied. I could even go so far as to say, I don't care about all access denied. I only care if there was an access denied because of an anti-passback violation or because of an expired credential. So I can get extremely granular with these types of reports. And a cardholder activity report versus a area activity report versus a door activity report, they're all sort of the same report, just you, they're asking you for information in slightly different ways. So let's just turn events off because I want to see all access control events for all card holders over the last 30 days. Here's my report. Uh, maybe I'm looking for this particular incident. Again, I can double click and it brings me right to that point in the timeline. And you'll see, you know, right where that bookmark is. That's where I attempted to get, uh, give uh, this particular user access to the system. We were under a threat level state, so his uh, privileges weren't sufficient enough to get him through the door at this particular point in time, which is why he was access denied. Now, just like with bookmarks, I can also turn this into a chart. So by simply clicking the charts button, it brings me to... Uh, this in this particular case, a pie chart. And this isn't like a super useful pie chart. It shows me that I have had 142 uh, events over the last 30 days, and these are the individual days where those events occurred. Not super useful. But if I change this from event timestamp to cardholder, that's interesting. So now I see who's using my system the most in, in this particular incident or in instance, Dwight is the least, uh, is using the system the least. So maybe I need to pay a, a little bit more attention to Dwight. Uh, or if you saw one of these was completely out of whack, right? So 
uh, you, you had 142 incidents and 100 of them were coming from one specific cardholder, well, maybe that's a conversation that you need to have with that cardholder or that cardholder's manager, right? Or instead of looking at, at it a pie, in, a, in a pie chart format, if we turn this into a line graph, we're going to split this up by credential over time broken down by the day. Now, this is where things start to get really interesting because, okay, we had 142 incidents in this time frame, but now we can see over the course of time who's using their card the most and when. So here we can see that Pam swiped her card 10 times on this particular day, uh, whereas Michael swiped his card four times this day. And then here we have Hank, who swiped his card 16 times during this one day period. So you could imagine over the course of time how relevant and useful this information can become. Again, this is not who's using your system, it's how is my system being used. So now I can take this report, this particular report, right click and save it. And I'm gonna show you uh, here in Security Desk, if I come to Public Tasks, you could see I already have these reports pre-saved. So now I don't have to run them uh, every single time and put in my individual parameters. I can just easily come over here and say, you know what, I wanna see a bookmarks report based on a line chart. Come over here and it's done. Like literally a couple of clicks and, and you're done. Or I can come over here and say, uh, show me the bookmarks visual report and it runs it for me automatically. So this is uh, really relevant, really useful. These can be, you could even create a schedule task to say, you know, once a day, once a week, once an hour, I want this report emailed to me or saved to a network drive, or I wanna get an alert when the report is ready, whatever it is, uh, you can do that once the report is already pre-configured. So thanks for sticking with me to the end. Um, as promised, a bonus feature, dashboards. So dashboards became available in 5.7 as well, and they've been improved upon in 5.8 and 5.9. As you can see here, I've built out a really basic reception dashboard. So rather than a receptionist sitting at their desk and monitoring uh, a, a bunch of tiles, here we're giving the receptionist a lot of really relevant information to them. So I have the, the soft phone uh, ready to go. So if somebody hit the button, uh, they'd get a phone call right there. Here we also have a map. Uh, here we also have a live stream coming in from YouTube. So maybe this could be, this is the news in this case, but it could be a weather map or it could be any, any number of things. And here we're running a website. So this could just as easily be a, 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 any sort of third-party web-based application. Here we've got a couple of cameras. Here we've got the number of visitors in the facility. And here we have a cardholder activity report. So this report because it was saved prior uh, as part of like the reports that we were doing earlier, I can now incorporate this chart directly into a dashboard. And this chart is going to refresh itself once a minute. So by simply hitting edit dashboard, I'm gonna get rid of this one. I'm gonna say, I wanna add a chart, click, drag it in, size it appropriately, and then tell it, what do I want? show me the uh, cardholder access denied report. And there it is. And I could say, all right, auto refresh it every minute and hit done. And now I can see who is getting access denied right here from, uh, from one simple single pane of glass. So as the receptionist, if somebody uh, attempted an access denied event, I would get it here. And if somebody came to the front door intercom, which I'll simulate here, I can easily call or, or I could pick up the call right from here and even release the door, which we see I now get a door manually released, unlock on the, uh, on the map. So I think you would agree with me that reports are one of the most useful features of the Genetech Security Center suite. Um, whether you're running just video or video and access or video access and license plate recognition or any other uh, set of variables that you're gonna uh, throw into Security Center, reports and the ability to run them uh, really sort of elevate your operational capabilities to another level. And then when we add visual reports on top of that, followed by 
taking those visual reports and sticking them into a custom made dashboard, you could see how we can uh, increase your operational capabilities exponentially. I hope this video was really useful for you. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, concerns, drop them down below. Uh, be sure to leave a comment. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you're interested in receiving more content like this. We'll see you on the next one.